everyone. Welcome to our session from the customer education team at Distributed 2021. My name is Jennifer Clark, and I'm really excited to share with you a brand new session, never before seen, um, for our time today. Um, so today's session is called 10 Things You Don't Know About Miro. And while we are getting set up and everyone's filing in, if you could please join the conversation in the chat and answer our icebreaker question, what's your favorite dessert? We love your recommendations, so thanks in advance. Like I said before, my name is Jennifer Clark. I'm today's educator. I'm a customer education manager here at Miro, and I've been an adult educator for the last 10 years, and I'm really excited to bring to you today some advanced or intermediate tricks that you might not have noticed uh, when exploring Miro for the first time. So if you haven't yet mastered the basics, we've got another session called Getting Started with Miro with Giovanni that you'll definitely wanna catch. Um, but this session is going to show and reveal to you some top tips and tricks you might not have tried yet. Uh, so I'm really excited to take you through today's session. But before we begin, let's cover some basics about what is Miro. Uh, it's an online collaborative whiteboarding platform. So it's online in that you can access it from any device, uh, be that your desktop, your laptop, your smartphone, or your tablet device. And you can download the app or open it up in any browser window. It's also collaborative. So not only can you create content and then share it with others in Miro, you can actually bring people into Miro with you and co-create content together at the same time, which is my personal favorite. It's also a whiteboarding tool. So anything you would expect to be able to do on a physical or digital whiteboard, you'll be able to do in Miro. And I'll show you some of those tricks today. And it's also a platform. So Miro already integrates with many of the tools you're likely using on a regular basis. Uh, so check out our marketplace for some integrations, and we'll show you a couple of those too in today's session. All right, great. So now that we know what Miro is capable of, let's talk about our sessions today. We're actually going to count down our top 10 favorite tricks, maybe some tips you didn't know about Miro, and I'd love for you to count along with me. Um, so maybe you know all 10, in which case, kudos to you. Um, we owe you a drink um, if you know all 10. Uh, but count down with me, we'll go one by one and just kind of jot down on your own piece of paper whether you knew this trick or you learned something new and tally it up at the end and, and see how you do. All right, so with that being said, let's get going with our first trick, top 10. Uh, number 10, connect with precision. So I'm gonna leave facilitator mode real quick and just zoom out a touch so we can see our board. And I've got two shapes here and I'd like to connect the dots. Uh, maybe you've already tried this before, where you click on a shape and then you drag from any blue dot um, on each of the edges uh, to connect in a straight line um, from one object to another. But, you know, if you'd really like to make sure that your lines always match up uh, against like a 45 degree angle or just like a straight edge, hit the shift key on your keyboard as you are dragging. And if you'll notice, my cursor is showing these like really kind of precise guidelines, just holding the shift key on my keyboard while I am dragging from that line, making sure that I'll always connect with like a super straight line um, every time I'm connecting between objects. So our 10th tip is to connect with precision, hold the shift key while you're clicking and dragging from one shape to the next, uh, and it'll connect you with a really straight line and give you those guidelines. All right, well, that was an easy one. So maybe you knew that one already. Let's see if I can stump you with this one. And I'm calling this one, unfurl your presentation. Now this is gonna work with uh, you know, presentations like slides or PowerPoint. It'll also work with a PDF. And all you'll need to do is upload that file to Miro and then I'll show you what you can do with it. So again, our upload tool is over on the object menu on the left-hand side. It's this upward facing arrow inside that box that says upload. And you can upload directly from your local device or from a cloud-based storage solution like Google Drive, for example. And I just pulled you know, a simple template um, from my Google Drive just right here. 
I uploaded it to the board. And maybe you already knew that when you click on a presentation, you get a little menu that'll appear above it. And it'll give you, uh, you know, directional arrows to flip through the presentation. So we've got one of 29 right here. And that's right, I can actually click through each slide and show every like frame or slide of the presentation just like this. Um, so that's pretty cool. But what you might not have tried yet is to extract certain frames to manipulate as objects on the board itself. So I'll just go back up to the context menu above that presentation. And I'm looking for this button with a bunch of pages overlapping each other. And when I hover over it, it'll say extract pages. So I'll just click on extract pages and I've got options. So I can extract all of the pages from this presentation and it'll unfurl them right below or I can select the frames that I like or the slides that I like. So let's say I just wanna pull slides three through five um, onto the board. I just hit extract and there they are. They'll appear right below me. And then I have the option to resize if I like or maybe move them over here to the right to a blank spot on the board. And the reason why I like doing this is if I've developed a presentation and I'd actually like to play with the order maybe, or maybe redesign it in Miro or bring it into this space because I'm going to facilitate this content into Miro, that makes this all possible. Uh, so I can decide, oh, you know, I'd actually like to move these. This is just me editing, uh, you know, me kind of optimizing my presentation. I can use them, you know, just like you would any other object in Miro. Um, you can also, for example, use connection lines if you'd like. Um, you could then add maybe a sticky note on the presentation and say, uh, make edits here. Um, this is just options for you to turn a presentation that you have built in another setting, bring it into Miro, and then do some editing magic to bring it to life. So I love that trick. Um, as someone who's created many presentations in my career, um, this was a game changer when I learned this trick. All right, so that was our ninth trick. Let's go to number eight and see if you know this one. And it's taking, you know, cells or information from a spreadsheet and bringing them into Miro as sticky notes. So maybe you've tried this one before, but maybe you haven't. I've just got a simple spreadsheet that I've uploaded to the board right here. And again, to do that, I just used the upload arrow on my object menu, and I just brought it in straight from Google Drive. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that spreadsheet and double click. It'll actually bring in my Google spreadsheet just right here so I can review it and make edits if I'd like. But what I'd like to show you is that you can actually select, you know, I'm just holding the shift key on my keyboard, grabbing all of those and then copying them to my clipboard using command or control C. I'll go ahead and close that spreadsheet. And I'll come to a spot over here on the board. And if I paste them on the board, I don't get just a bunch of floating text. It translates all of those cells onto sticky notes which I can then move, delete if I want to, change the color if I'd like, and uh, connect and do everything else on a mirror board that I could uh, with typical sticky notes. So I really like this tip if I'm bringing in feedback, for example, um, from you know, maybe a customer survey, and I'm you know, organizing them as sticky notes for affinity mapping or tagging them for a teammate. Um, I also like it because it just makes them so much more flexible and movable on a Miro board. Um, so that trick is really cool. This will work with any spreadsheet, but if you'd like to host the spreadsheet and edit it in real time in Miro, that'll work with Google Sheets. So check that one out. All right, great. Let's count down to number seven, our seventh tip. And this is to tidy your board. It's to make things look a little neater and look a little bit more organized and also to play uh, a little bit around with some sticky note packs and creating them in Miro itself. So as you notice on my frame right here, I've just got a ton of random sticky notes all kind of floating around different colors all over the place. And let's say I'd like to actually get these organized in a certain setup. So the first trick I'd love to show you is to select all of them, shift, click, drag on your keyboard, shift, click, drag, and I'm gonna catch all of those sticky notes in one go. Now look at the upper right hand corner of my selection window. You'll see this little handle or button right here. Four little white dots. You can see that when I hover my cursor over it, it's gonna turn into a little fist. So we'll have this little grip right here. And when I actually click on that handle, Miro automatically wants to sort all of these sticky notes into even columns and rows. And as I move my mouse from left to right, 
I can change the number of rows or columns that I have, which makes that really handy, makes it easy to organize. Now, one more trick I wanted to show you. While I have all of those sticky notes selected, you'll see that in the context menu above, I've got an option over here that is aligned with like two black squares, black rectangles right here. And when I hover over it, it says align objects. And that's right, you can actually align and justify things to the left, to the right, on the bottom or on the top. But the trick I wanted to show you is to use align to create a single sticky note pack, much like a physical one that you'd have on your desk at home. Um, so for example, I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna come down and it's a two-step process. I wanna align horizontally and then align vertically. So if I've got a bunch of sticky notes selected, the first step I wanna do is to click align horizontally. Okay, great, we're almost there. Click on align one more time and then align vertically and check that out. I've got a single sticky note pack, really deep drop shadow here, so that as I click and drag each of these sticky notes and people take one off the top, they've got a different color, they've got their own option. Um, so I love that. Using a line to create your own sticky notes pack and to get things organized and tidy on your board, it's a really good tip um, if you're hosting a workshop or a brainstorm. All right, cool. So now we've got our seventh tip. Let's go to our sixth tip. Hopefully you're still counting down with me. We're gonna talk about exporting specific frames um, from the board. So maybe you've tried this before to take something you create in Miro and then export it so that you can bring it to another spot. For example, um, attaching, it, attaching a PDF to an email or embedding the board um, in another application like Confluence so that people can interact with it. Um, I really like being able to export specific frames so that if I'd like to share a specific piece of work with someone that I've done in Miro, I can target their attention on one area, not have to show them the entire board. So let me take you to a blank space, a little bit of a presentation that I dropped right here on the board. It's just a little presentation template um, that I pulled from our template library. Um, so I've got all of these different frames right here, these different kind of slides of my presentation. And you know, I like the whole presentation, but I just wanna send one or two of these frames over to someone um, to have them give me some feedback. Maybe they're not a part of my Miro board, or maybe I just wanna share it with someone really briefly. Um, I can select two of these frames. So let me go ahead and do that now. I'll select this frame and then hold my shift key and select that frame so that I can select both at once. I'll go to the context menu right above it. And those three dots all the way to the right, I just click more. And then what I'll do is export as PDF, my first option, or if I select both, I can also find that option, sorry. I can also find that option in the upper left-hand corner next to the title of your board, export this board. Um, so I could also do it that way. Um, but to keep it easy, I'll just go ahead and hit the shift key, select both frames, three dots in the context menu just above, and we're going to export as PDF. And that's really great. I can then choose the quality that I'd like hit export and it will take those two frames only from the board instead of the entire space. So it's a quick way to get a more targeted uh, export of your board. All right, so do a quick check in, look at your scorecard. How many did you know or did you learn so far? Let us know in the chat, um, I'd love to see. Okay, great. Okay, so now that we've learned how to export specific frames, let's go to tip number five and that's customizing your toolbar. So you may have played around with some of the options in our object menu over on the left-hand side, and you probably use some features maybe more often than others, or maybe you'd like to use an application from our app library. Maybe you're using, for example, uh, the Kanban tool a lot, or Unsplash you're using regularly when you create content on the board. You can actually edit your toolbar a couple of different ways. The first is, you know, if I don't particularly use any one thing or want to move it in a certain order, I can actually drag, click and drag and drop, for example, frames wherever I'd like them. So maybe I like it at the top because it's one of the first things I do when I create content on the board. I could also bring in, for example, that Kanban uh, tool and drop, drag and drop it directly into that object menu. So that's a really handy way to customize, get this in the order that you like and then bring in applications that you use on a regular basis so that you have easy access to them whenever you're creating content. So customizing your toolbar, it's a really cool hack and I like using this um, to just make making content speedier for me um, in Miro. All right, great, let's keep going. 
We're now onto our fourth tip, and I think we've hit like the expert tier at this point. Um, this one really impressed me when I learned how to do this in Miro, and I use it all the time um, when I'm resetting presentations or resetting activities and workshops or trying to edit a lot of content at once. And that's using the filter button inside the context menu. Maybe you've tried it before. Um, so let's take a look at a couple of examples of ways you could do this. As you notice in screen right now, I've got a few different text boxes. They're all different fonts. They're different sizes. They've got different highlights. Um, you know, they're all different. And maybe I'd like all of them to update at once. I'd like to get them all in the same font. I can do that. Um, so just click all of these text boxes. You can hold the shift key down if you want, just to make it even more precise. And as you'll notice, um, I can edit the content just right here. But let's say I just wanted to really quickly shift, click, drag, and select this entire view. So I've got an image and text boxes included in this selection. But I don't want to edit the image. I just want to edit the text. So as you'll notice in the context menu that appears above, I see filter, and it says five objects right there. And if I click on filter, I can actually tell Miro that I'd like to select specifically the text boxes or just the image. And since I want to edit those text boxes, that's what I'll select. So I'll select those text boxes, and then I can make some changes. So I can change the font for all of those right there. I can change the size. I can remove those highlights if I'd like. And yeah, just like so. And I can you know make all of the font the same color. And now check it out. All of these are now the same font, the same size, with the same background. And I didn't disturb any content underneath to do that, uh, which I think is such a cool trick. We can do this another way too. Let me show you a really cute example. I just brought in two photos from Unsplash for a fun icebreaker. You know, which milkshake would you choose? Um, and you can see that everyone who was on the board used emojis to kind of vote for their favorite. Um, and, you know, that was really fun. And now I'm tidying up the workshop. I'm getting set up for my next session. And I'd like to, you know, kind of reset this space so someone else or another group can come in and vote with emojis, right? Um, so I don't really want to hand click every single one of these emojis and delete them. I'd like to remove them, just kind of wipe the board clean all at once. So to do that again, we're going to do shift, click, drag one more time, select everything in view, this whole area in view, go again to that context menu where we say filter, we see filter right there. And I'm just going to click on emoji, hit delete. And now we're refreshed and ready to go for our next session. Um, so really cool trick, using filter to reset the board really fast and to make some edits to content uh, really quickly. All right, so now we're in our top three tips, our top three tips. Let us know in the chat again, what's your score so far? I'd love to hear. All right, great. The next thing I'd love to show you is a really cool trick called link to. Link to is one of the most powerful tips I think that I use in Miro not only when I'm creating content that I'd like to present, but also when you are architecting workshops where people may be moving from one spot to another, um, from a breakout room to a shared group discussion space. These are all options for you. Um, so to set up link to, you're gonna need a couple of things on the board to get started and to be prepared. You're going to need a starting object, just like so, and an ending object right here. So once you've identified your start point and your end point in Miro, you're ready to link them. So let's get going. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on my starting point, and I've got a few shapes and a couple of images here, but I really wanna link this particular shape um, in my link to path. So I'll just click on that, and then I'll find my context menu right above it, and all the way to the right, those three dots again. Uh, let us know in the chat, um, do you kind of avoid this like little more menu because you don't really know what's in there? I did it first, but I realized that when I started clicking this open, there are so many more tools available um, to enhance your experience in Miro. So I'll click on those three dots, and then I'll go down to the option that says Link To or Command K on your keyboard. So I'll just click on Link To, and what do you notice? The entire screen just went gray. It's because Miro is prompting you, select your endpoint. So if we're going to hop to an endpoint, tell me where that endpoint is. So I can zoom out. I can totally navigate around the board. And as I hover my cursor over different objects, Miro will highlight them in a darker shade of gray. 
So it'll indicate to you, okay, this is what I'm picking up as my end object. But I know I want to end on this particular set right here, this particular shape. I'll zoom in really close and you can see that it'll highlight in that dark gray and then I'll click on it. Now check the upper left hand corner. Did you see that a URL just appeared? That's because every object in Miro has its own unique URL. So you can link and go back and forth between different shapes, different objects on the board, um, and you can link to anything essentially that's here. So once I click confirm, it'll look like nothing happened, but that's because you have to go back to your start point and you'll notice a difference. Do you see that little arrow in the upper right hand corner? That is your little navigation spot. Uh, that's your kind of lily pad that you're hopping off from to the next one. So as you or your participants in your workshop or in your brainstorm, click on that button, it'll hop you right to that ending point. And it'll zoom you in really close and really tight on that image um, so that you can focus everyone's attention, for example, on their breakout room or on a particular place where they're, they're going to share input on a sticky note as an example. So link to is that other really cool, powerful trick um, that I think is really nice to have for collaborating with larger groups, um, especially if people are maybe new to Miro and don't exactly know, um, for example, how to navigate to every single spot, giving people those stepping stones to where you'd like to place them um, as they move through an exercise um, is just a really powerful tool to make that work. All right, so link to, that was one of my favorites, but we're not done yet. Now we're in our top two, our top two tips. And in this one, I wanted to show you some shortcuts that you should commit to memory. And we're gonna go over a few here. Maybe you know some of these, but some of these may be new to you. Actually, one of these I learned, and I've been using Miro for the last three years. Um, this one I learned last week. Um, so that, that just kind of tells you about um, kind of the treasure trove of optimization and secrets and ways to make your experience even faster or more efficient in Miro. Um, so the first thing I wanted to show you is how to create additional sticky notes on the board with speed. Um, so we're gonna focus in on just this little grouping of sticky notes right here. And if you've never tried this before, I really recommend it. Um, so I've got a few sticky notes right here, and I'd really like to add a few more to my board. Of course, you can always go over here to the sticky note, click on it, choose your color, and then click to place. But I think that's too many clicks for me and too many clicks for most people. So while the cursor is blinking inside that sticky note, hit tab. Tab is what's gonna get you a fresh brand new sticky and it'll create it, you know, kind of locally right in that spot on the board so that you can then kind of move it around and manipulate it and change its size and whatever you need to do. You could also just hit N on your keyboard to pull up the menu and then select the color that you like. So we've got hitting tab and then hitting N to bring up that menu for the sticky notes. Two quick ways to activate that menu so you can get more notes onto the board. All right, cool. Let's go to this next section. I'll show you another trick. You may have caught me already doing this one before. It's just such a time saver and such an enhancement that I kind of don't know what life is like without it, <laughs> but it's how to multi-select objects on the board. Now, maybe you've done this before where you've like hand selected every single object that you want to kind of move things around. So we're clicking one at a time, maybe moving them or reorganizing objects on the board. So some of you may have seen that earlier trick where we can click on something and then as we hold down the shift key on our keyboard, we can click to select more objects. And then that allows us to move them as a group um, and then also to customize them all together if they're all the same type of object. We can also use those white dots in the corner to resize them all at once if they're all selected at once. But by far my favorite trick here is the shift, click, drag, the three-step multi-select option. So you hit shift on your keyboard, click on the corner, and then drag across everything you'd like to select and release. That way you get everything all in at once. It's a really easy way to quickly grab a bunch of content and then you can move it anywhere you'd like. Um, and then, you know, now that we've got everything selected, we can customize them further by changing the font all at once maybe changing, you know, changing the size of the font, changing the font, um, and then playing with any of these other customization options here too. All right, great. So those were a few, a few of those shortcuts that I wanted to show you. And then the last one is how to duplicate objects quickly. 
you may know a few of these, but I'm going to go in order of like most obvious to least obvious, or maybe ones you've tried before to maybe you haven't tried before. Um, so let's get going. The first one we're going to do is to just copy and paste objects on the board, make an exact copy, and then just paste it elsewhere. So I can hit Command or Control C on my keyboard when an object is selected, and then hit Command V to duplicate. That's really easy. You've done that before, probably. So let's delete that one. Another one you might try in Miro is when you select an object, hit Command D on your keyboard, Command D, and that will make an exact duplicate right next door to the object that you were selecting. So then you can move that one around as well and change it and make your edits. But the one you probably didn't know about is using Option or Alt while clicking on an object to both make an exact copy and then put it wherever you want on the board right away. So I'll click on an object and then as I hit Option, I'm holding Option and dragging away. I can select this kind of copy of that object and place it wherever I'd like on the board and then release. That makes an exact duplicate and you can place it anywhere you want on the board. It won't just populate right next door. You can drag and drop that anywhere you want. Um, and if you don't have the option key on your keyboard, try Alt. Uh, that's the option that you'll choose for that hack. All right, great. So those were some really cool shortcuts that I think you should commit to memory. If you'd like to explore even more shortcuts, I encourage you to go to the settings menu in the upper right hand corner, just one tick to the right of the share menu. The second option in that menu will say shortcuts and you can explore um, a bunch of different shortcuts to make objects appear with just one letter. You have some general shortcuts that'll help you um, and then some navigation and text shortcuts to make it even easier. Maybe you can graduate to a place where you don't even need a mouse um, to use Miro. I like the mouse, so I'm never going to give it up, but maybe you can try that. All right, cool. We are now down to our top tip, our biggest hack, um, maybe the tricks you didn't know about with Miro. So again, tell us in the chat what's your score so far. I want to see if anyone knows these last ones um, and let us know if you're going to learn anything new with our last one. And that is to edit your own color palette in Miro. And I'm going to show you the fastest way to do that, um, to really customize what colors of shapes or lines that you're going to be using in Miro to maybe make it match your brand guidelines or just the color palette that you want to work with for your content. So we're going to do this. The easiest way, I think, is to go to the pen tool. It's in the object menu, left hand side. Just looks like this little pencil. We're just going to click it open. And as you'll notice, I've got three different nib sizes for my pen just below. And if I click on any one of these colors, I'm able to select a full color palette. I can also control the thickness of my nib. Um, now, we've got some standard colors that'll appear at the top of the menu. And then you see some colors that I've started to add to the menu. Maybe you've even seen this part before, where you click the plus button, and then you can drag you know, your little slider over the gradient and select a color that you'd like. But two more quick tips here. You can actually add your own hex code right here. Okay, yeah, there we go. Um, I've just entered in some letters or you can enter letters and numbers to select the color that you like. And then, you know, once, we, once we're happy with that, we've got that color, we've got it in our color palette now. Um, you can also, if you click that plus button and wanna add another custom color to the board, you can also click the dropper and go find another color that you'd like. Uh, maybe one that matches your um, brand design or something else that you're creating um, already on the board, you'd like to match it. Um, so I'm going to actually pull in a color from one of these really beautiful illustrations from our very talented brand team. I'll just click my dropper on that color um, and hit done and it'll appear in that menu as well. So that's another handy way to customize your color palette in Miro. The other thing that you can do is if you selected a color but you don't really care for it, maybe you're not using it anymore or uh, you know it's just not you just don't want it to be a part of your palette. Um, just go to those options in the menu and just drag and throw them away. We can just drag and drop them off of the color palette menu and customize it further. Love that. So of any of the custom colors you've added, if it wasn't quite, quite right or you don't want to include it in your palette anymore, you can just drag and drop them. So now I've got my own custom color palette in Miro. That means when I use the pen tool, I can choose from any one of those colors and those colors will be available for other types of objects like shapes. So for example, if I draw this little star right here, right in the center, 
I can select one of those really beautiful colors that I've added to my palette, uh, just like so. So your custom color palette in Miro is my top tip, my favorite trick, and something you should try in your next collaborative session. All right, great. So those were my top 10 tips. Tell us in the chat, how did you do? If you got all 10, I want you to reach out to us on the customer education team because we would love to celebrate you for being a Miro expert. Um, but if you learned something new, tell us which one, what was your favorite um, that you learned today? And while we're sharing what our favorites were, I'd love to orient you to even more resources to help you learn more um, about all of these secrets and surprises in the product, but maybe different ways you could apply your now advanced skill set um, to different use cases and different applications in Miro. Um, so the first one is to head to our Miro Academy. This is where we have all of our on-demand video-based courses that you can stop and start anytime based on your schedule. You can also come to more webinars with the live facilitation team. We teach multiple sessions every week and we'd love to see you um, in one of those sessions. We also have our help center, which has great documentation and FAQs, and you can explore some of those integrations and apps and see what you might like to add uh, to your own personal workspace. And of course, we'd love for you to explore our community, uh, connect with other Miro enthusiasts, get inspiration and advice from others, and even connect more about Distributed Today, learn a little bit more about what people's takeaways or inspiration moments were from today's conference. Um, and then of course, our Miroverse, that's where we have our community sourced template library. You can explore a bunch of different options, uh, get inspiration for different icebreakers or uh, team meeting sessions, um, or maybe even do a really extensive strategy workshop, for example, that you can pull directly from an expert in Miroverse. I really encourage that you check all of these out. And you know, a really handy way to explore all of these at once is to go to the question mark in the upper right hand corner. You're gonna see our in-app learning guide where you can explore different tutorials, you can go straight to the Academy if you wish, maybe head straight to our webinar page where you can sign up for more sessions with us, the live team, um, and explore other resources and information to help you out. All right, great. Thank you so much for joining me um, for the last like 45 minutes or so. I'm so grateful for the time we had together to teach you more about our top 10 favorite tips and tricks in Miro. Um, please check out our other webinars and we'll see you in our next session. Bye. Well, that was fast. I kind of went through my top 10 tips a little faster than I thought. So you've unlocked some bonus content um, about a few more tips and tricks you might try to make your work easier and more efficient in Miro. And I've only got about 10 minutes left, so I'm gonna do these as fast as possible and give you all the tricks. So let's get going. One of the ones that I love is that if you create a frame on a board for a breakout room and you label it and duplicate, it'll tick the numbers up. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna add a frame to the board from the object menu. Custom ones are what I like the best. And I'm gonna double click in the upper left-hand corner to rename uh, this frame. So I'll call that breakout room number one. Okay, great. So now that that's labeled, I'll come over here and show you what I mean. I'll just select that frame and hit Command D on my keyboard. Do you see the title of that second frame? It says breakout room two. I'll do it one more time. Now that one says breakout room three. I didn't have to go in and make any edits. It just naturally counted me up. Um, so I find that really easy and quick. If I'm pairing Miro with, for example, a video conferencing software and we're all in breakout rooms, now everyone's got their own individual workspace. All right, I've got a few more minutes. So let's show you another one. Another trick that I love is to take uh, the comment boxes and really take them to the next level. So let's say I've got some ideas on the board. I'm just gonna add a couple of sticky notes, make them a little bit bigger. Okay, just like so. And say I've got a couple of ideas on the board and I'm gonna get some feedback on some of these ideas. So we'll zoom in a little bit to show you. And I'll you know kind of move these around, make them a different color just to give you that kind of real life effect. Okay. All right, so now I've got all of my ideas and then I want a couple of people to come give me input on my board. They can do this a lot of different ways, but if you haven't tried customizing and doing a little bit more with the comment tool, I really think you should try it. So go to the comment box in the object menu, left-hand side, looks like a little chat bubble with some text inside. I'll click on comment 
and I can just drop that comment anywhere I like and someone can give me some feedback like, love this idea, right? Now, automatically, any comment that you first put on the board will be yellow because uh, it really stands out, you know, in comparison to most colors on the board. But if I click on that comment tool, I can actually change that color, um, which might be nice if I have several people leaving me feedback on the board. They could differentiate by shade um, if they prefer. Um, also, when we are leaving comments for people on the board, I can at mention a specific person. So I can, for example, uh, let Matt know that I'd love you to take a look at this. But I don't have to just mention a single person. I can also mention a team, for example, or a board or a project. We could like notify all from like a certain project um, and we could like grab everybody who's in on this project with us and let them know, hey, come check this out. These are all like really cool ways that you could kind of customize notification. Uh, the other thing I think is really cool is that there are little emoji reactions to the right of uh, any of the text that you enter in these comments. So you can hit that little emoji button and say, you know, plus one to this or heard or got you, whatever you need to do to kind of keep the conversation moving. And once the conversation's over, you've resolved that issue or you've interacted with that feedback, um, just click that little toggle that says resolve and then it disappears from the board. If you ever wanted to get it back though, click open the comment box on your board and down there at the bottom, you'll see a little button that says show resolved and you can reopen or re-examine those comments that you've closed or interacted with. So that's just a little extended view um, of what comments look like on the board. Pretty cool. Okay, great. So I've only got a few more minutes and wanted to show you a couple of other tips and tricks. Um, so let's keep going. I'm going to break open a fresh spot on the board. And this one's actually related to our Kanban tool. Um, I don't think many people know that the Kanban feature in Miro is actually pretty customizable. So if you haven't played around with it yet, I think that this one's a really nice one to try. So again, a Kanban or a lightweight task tracker that you can use in Miro. I dragged this one into my custom toolbar. So I'm going to go ahead and click open that one and then just click the place on the board. It's super teeny tiny. So that's okay. I'm going to resize it and make it extra large so we can all see it. So we'll make it extra large. Okay. Now what you may not know is that you can customize the number of columns or swim lanes in a Kanban board. And you can also edit what each of these columns are named. So as an example, if I don't like to do, but I prefer to call that backlog, I can totally make that change. Um, I can also change the colors of these bars that are underneath um, the text right here. So if I just say want it to all be the same color or really like a certain shade, um, I can customize further here. I don't think many people know about that trick, but I just love it because maybe you just want it to look more aesthetic and that's like your choice, right? Um, the other thing that you can do is you can change the color of the cards that you drop into the Kanban tool. Um, in two ways. You can change the shade of the little tab here on the left, and you can also change the background tone of that card. Let me show you. So you can expand that card and you can change the color, uh, which is really cool. We can, we can kind of customize those colors there. So we've got that. And then if we kind of right click on it, I think you can also change that fill card background. So I'm just clicking on the card from here. Instead of expanding it, I'm just editing the color directly from there. I'm going to click fill card background and then I can also change this tone as well. Um, then, you know, kind of like change it up so we can have that tone and that kind of indent um, that side color match um, and have something like really kind of pop more tonal like that. Um, so just a few tricks to make that Kanban tool work for you. Um, of course, maybe you've tried this one before. You can also delete any column that you like so we can delete it. And we can also flip flop and swap any of the columns back and forth wherever you want. Um, so that's our Kanban tool, um, another kind of a cool trick that you might try. All right, so let me go to my last little frame here. I've only got a couple minutes left, so we gotta get kind of speedy. I'll show you a, one more trick. Um, and that is with adding board objects to our note feature in Miro. Um, so let me go ahead and get a couple of objects on the board to show you what I mean. I'm gonna grab a sticky note just like so. And I'll say that maybe this is my agenda for day one. And then I've got one for day two because this is my like two day workshop that I'm doing in Miro. And I've got my agenda over here and over here. 
I've only got a couple minutes left, so I gotta really go. Um, so we've got two notes right here, and I want to link them to the note feature in Miro. So if you've never tried the note feature, go to the upper right hand corner and click on that piece of paper. So my favorite thing is to actually link board objects to the menu. So I'll just go ahead and start typing some text, agenda item one, and then I have agenda two. Now I could just duplicate using text the exact agenda for day one and day two from the board into the note or however you like. But I also, I can also include a board object here so that when people click on that spot, it will take them directly to that area of the board and they can review for themselves. So I'll just hit the slash to pull up board object. Board object is what you're looking for. And again, you'll notice that familiar experience where the board starts to shade gray and you're able to select from any object you'd like on the board. So I'll just select, for example, agenda for day one, agenda for day one, they both match. I'll click confirm and watch this. The note will appear as an image in your agenda, um, which is really cool. I'll do the same thing for day two. Again, add board object, select the item that you'd like and hit confirm. We'll let that update and then we're good to go. Okay, so now watch this. If I'm on a totally random part of the board, I'm your average participant in a workshop and I'm like, oh no, where's the agenda? Where am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to be doing? You can get back to the right spot by clicking open that note again. And I can click on that board object directly, hit that little arrow just right there to fly me right to that spot. And now I'm back in center. Um, I can review the agenda from here. So just love linking board objects in the note uh, feature in Miro so that I can get my participants or attendees back to the same spot. And I think that we're all out of time now. So those were your bonus tips and tricks uh, to enhance your experience in Miro. Again, thank you so much for spending uh, that little time with us to learn more. And we're excited to see you in our next session. Bye.